Hey, folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. That's Adrian. And that's Glenn. And today we're going to take a look at the artist, Stephen Wilson. Stephen Wilson got his start in the music business, I believe, with his Porcupine Tree project, which was originally going to be a solo venture, or really just him doing all the music. But that turned into a full band endeavor by the year 1993. He's also well known for remixing classic records. I don't listen to any other version of Who's Next uh, other than the one that he remixed in recent years. I definitely recommend it, too. Uh, Stephen Wilson has put out, well, at least at this point, he had put out three solo albums. This is on his third solo album. The song we're going to look at is called Luminol. Got good reviews, and his albums up to that point had been known for their sound quality. Uh, So this one was engineered with Alan Parsons, the guy who also worked on Dark Side of the Moon and had the Alan Parsons project and worked at Abbey Road. (laughs) That guy. Sounds very interesting. Really, this guy's music sounds like it should be right up our alley. I mean, it's described as progressive rock, maybe jazz fusion, maybe art rock. So, Adrian, do you know anything about Steve Wilson? Well, actually, I've uh, I've seen him before because I, I have a Steve Hackett DVD that has him uh, performing on one of the songs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And if I'm not mistaken, this guy plays barefoot all the time. Uh, maybe so that he has better contact with his pedals or something like that. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, you That's know. My theory. <laughs> so what is? I wonder what his primary instrument is. That's how little I know about Stephen Wilson. Is he a guitar player for the most part? Yeah, yeah. He okay. played guitar on the Steve Hackett DVD. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm looking now. It says, founder, guitarist, lead vocalist, and songwriter of rock band Porcupine Tree. Yeah, I mean, sounds like he's got quite the pedigree and and, uh, also has a good ear for good sound. Poking around earlier, I noted somebody had said, oh, this record, The Raven, uh, is, you know, almost as good as Close to the Edge by Yes. (laughs) And I said, well, you know, I'll believe that when I hear it. However, that's, uh, to even say that, uh, provides a little bit more interest. Anyway, I'm definitely interested in taking a look at this. So this is a live version. Okay, Adrian, I can assume you haven't heard this. I haven't heard it yet, no. Good, okay. Definitely curious. Let's see. Let's check it out.
That was totally bleeping awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, every one of these musicians, at the risk of stating the terribly obvious, every one of these musicians is way top notch. So yeah, so that's the level of talent, you know, that, that he's going with on these records and that he's playing with him. And yeah, they sound great. <laughs> no question. Yeah. Invokes memories of early Genesis, yes, King Crimson, and Mahavishnu Orchestra. Oh man, Adrian. I'm not even gonna here, I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, I can't what see I have that. here, okay, so this is the these are all the notes I took while listening to this. And right yeah. up there it says, no kidding, it says Rush, yes, King Crimson, you know, Mellotron. And down here I've got Billy Cobham Spectrum or Other Fusion. So oh, very much wow. Mahavishnu Orchestra. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're on the same wavelength there. You know what else I got out of it, which I was a little surprised by, uh, the part in the middle where they started bringing in those harmonies and being kind of acoustic for a moment or two. That reminded me a lot of David Crosby right around 1971 when his first solo album came out. If I could only remember my name, this was an album that everybody in San Francisco was on, like members of the Grateful Dead. And, uh, and Neil Young and uh, plenty of other people, I think, members of Santana, uh, Joni Mitchell, you know, just a huge crowd of well-known people made it onto the record. And uh, there's a, the song on there called Orleans, or Orleans, sounds a lot like that, a lot of the harmonies that were going on in there. And another one, Triad, I, I thought I heard bits of what could have been Crosby's Triad mm -hmm. song. I mean, not that they were playing that, but just influenced by that. And I was like, Whoa, okay. <laughs> I know that song. Yeah. <laughs> there was this studio called Wally Hyder Studios in San Francisco. That's where David Crosby did that album. And that's where a lot of bands did famous records there, like uh, the first Crosby, Stills, Nash records. First couple were done there. Uh, the Grateful Dead did, I think they did American Beauty there and Working Man's Dead. You know, just lots and lots of people. So it sounds like that era you know, like kind of borrowing from that era. And you, you get a little CSNY sound in those. And you know what else? ELP. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit, you know, like it could have been like the Greg Lake part of the ELP songs for a bit. You know? The song was obviously incredibly well written, too. I think it, it probably deserves a better word than song. I'd call it a composition, perhaps. or something. Yeah, yeah. A slight epic. I mean, that's what, 12 yeah. minutes. So that's more than half an album side. Yeah. Um, Prog rock makes a return. <laughs> yeah, really nice. And I liked also that all the flutes and every. I liked the use of the Mellotron in there. It was really good. I mean, he did have a reed guy in there, but I think it was just one. And it often sounded like there was more than one. And I think that was Mellotron, you know, accompaniment. But yeah, just really pretty incredible. That was a spectacular band. The song sounded amazing, too. I liked the really good quality sounds that he worked out there. It was a real treat. It was a real treat to listen to. And I'd like to hear some more, for sure. I'd like to keep going with this guy. Uh, you know, for that matter, even Porcupine Tree. But maybe it'd be nice to get another Stephen Wilson track first. But yeah, Porcupine Tree as well. If anybody's got any suggestions for either artist, sure, I know it's kind of the same guy. That's all right. No. Um, yeah, please leave them below. Okay. And uh, let us know what you thought of this, what your general impressions were. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you enjoyed our presentation, please subscribe. All right, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, take care, folks. See you all later.